Welcome, welcome to your new favorite sports show, Gas Presents Sports for the Culture. I'm today's host, Bryce. Joined by the panel, as always, top left. Introduce yourself. What up, yo? Scruff line. What's good to the people? Top right. Introduce yourself. Hey, it's your boy, Rome. Representing two up, two down. Gas Sports, man. This is definitely going to be the number one show. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Bottom right. Introduce yourself. Tim, T Boogie on IG and Twitter, man. Social distance. Quarantine yourself right now. Be safe. Wash your hands. Wash your ass. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Everybody need to be safe during these times. Definitely some strange times, people. But we're here with a little bit of relief with this Sports for the Culture show. In the very first episode, we're proud to join you guys. So let's jump right into it, man. Some of the biggest news of the moment. It's not too much sports news, but it's, it's enough for us to dive into some things. So uh, one of the biggest news of the moment is uh, Christian McCaffrey, man, just became the highest paid running back this week, over $16 million a year. I don't know. I mean, like running backs, we know they got shelf life. We all know how how the running back money works. You know, one year running back looks great. Next year looks like a bad deal. And let's jump into that, fellas. Do you guys think this is a good signing uh, by the Panthers or this is an overpay? I, I'll go right away and go on some record and say this is not an overpay. Uh, I think it's a perfect contract for a dude that pretty much played out of his mind last year and has been not even just played out of his mind for one season, has consistently gotten better and improved and gotten to the point where people question if he can do it, do it again. I think he can do it again. I think he can do it about three more times. The dude, he's got it. And uh, he's young, so if you want to pay a dude at that age, I think it's respectable. Plus, he's got different layers to his game. I think it's definitely worth the contract, not an overpay, safe contract in terms of what you're getting there with Chris McCaffrey, total package. Yeah, man, I'm going to piggyback right on that because I, I agree. I think it's a it's a great contract. If you look at how old he is going into next season, he's only going to be 24. And running backs, as we all know, have a very short shelf life. And they're, they're only paying them about $38 million guaranteed, so really they can get out of this deal in about two, three years when he's only 26, 27. Or if you're looking at it from his perspective, he can re-up again once the money's not guaranteed and, and possibly get one more contract. So when I look at this, it's a great deal all around. So I, I would say kudos to him and his agent for this deal. I mean, I can't disagree too much. I mean, it's a good deal, good deal. Uh, by the time... Whether it works out or not, by the time he's out of it, we'll we'll know what Bridgewater is, and uh, th- they'll be able to rebuild or move in a different direction from from both. But uh, like just on the surface, just looking back at the past, you can't sign a running back for that much, man. This is the NFL, this is the new NFL. We're throwing the ball more. He, he caught, he received four thousand yards running. But when's the last time a uh, running back got paid and and it it worked out? I mean. It was so many bad contracts out there. I had to make a list. Let me let me run my run, run my list real quick. AP three years, forty two million. One good season, third year decline. Didn't work out for the Vikings. Jerk McKinnon, four years, thirty million. He's on the 49ers. We forgot he was in the league. Lamar Miller for the Texans, bust. We don't even got to talk about it. Levante Freeman, five years, forty one million. Three seasons, 18 games missed, and didn't even get 1,600 yards. Uh, Le'Veon Bell with the Jets. Steelers, you won that deal. Todd Gurley. <laughs> Todd Gurley. Look, yeah. Mr. Dead Money. The, the the Rams are paying Gurley, what, $20 million in dead money? Like That's more than some teams are carrying. Uh, you, you can't pay a running back in today's game that much money, man. It handicaps the team, hamstrings them. Uh, maybe a quarterback, maybe you pay the quarterbacks that, uh, but a running back, no. When I can find two guys, similar production. I'm not saying I can find two guys to equal McCaffrey, but there's two guys out there that I can grab, uh, a draft pick and a signing that will give me similar numbers uh, for a third of the value. And then I can spend the rest on defense, weapons, bridge water, that sort of thing. Um, and he'll never get those numbers again, ever. They, they didn't sign Roby Anderson. Uh, they didn't bring in a quarterback to, to to hand the ball off 50 times. You know what I mean? Like, he'll never get those numbers again. If, if, if I'm wrong, uh, pull up this podcast and uh, I, I'll pay you. You know what I'm saying? Tweet me. Uh, send it to my send it to my IG. You going to pay it every year or what? 
It's gonna be. I'll pay it every year. It's, it's not gonna happen. It's a revision. Every, every, I'll pay it every year. Give me hundred dollars. Yeah. I, 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 I'll tell you. Not only will he do it again, he gonna do it. He got at least three more, four more seasons like this. Still in his, still in his, in his, in, his, in the Arsenal. I say at least three solid. But I, I'll tell you, he'll be all. He'll be an All Pro again next season and probably the season after that too. So. Yeah, but all right, all right, all is, right. man, he he might he might he might be an all pro next season, but I think uh one thing that uh I don't know, like I I feel you guys running backs wear down and, it, and the drop off can be sudden with running backs. It doesn't have to be it's usually not a steady decline. It usually goes from there on top of the world to all of a sudden they're just a guy. I mean you could look at David Johnson for a perfect example of that. I mean, Chris McCaffrey hasn't been very injury prone, but he plays a position that takes a lot of hits. Now, the one thing I will say, though, like about this deal is that if the Panthers maximize this deal, I think it can be, you know, come out to be a great deal. If they use them wrong, it won't. They got to put Christian McCaffrey in positions to give him longevity at this point because they're paying them for, for, for four more years, big time money. So if they're giving them carries up the, you know, down the middle through the, between the tackles every play. They're using him the wrong way at this point. He's got to be used much more of a receiving back than he ever has. I mean, if he's getting over, if he's getting over 150 carries, I feel like at this point, I really think they're using him wrong because they're not using him to really maximize him for all four years. Uh, and if they use him correctly, this new hybrid role that I think is developing in the NFL, where you where a running back eventually will be so phased out that it'll be more of a receiver anyway. I think McCaffrey's the first to really hit the bank, break the bank in that role. And uh, I think that is a real, it's, it's pretty much a new role of, of running backs going forward. Yeah, man, I got to agree with Bryce on that one because you got to look at McCaffrey as more than just a running back. You got to look at those receiving numbers. And even if his numbers aren't always as high as they were this season, you're not going to get running backs that are going to put up receiving numbers the, the way that he does. And when I look at the film of the Panthers, uh, like they, they line him up at X receiver quite often. So M McCaffrey is a different breed. And I agree with what you're saying, though, because he's going to have to put up these numbers. And whenever running backs get paid, they tend to put a lot on the running back, and then that's when they tend to wear down. So th this will be the true test on, on if running backs should get paid or not moving forward because McCaffrey is, is the perfect version of, of this new ideal back. But uh, can he hold up? I mean, you said when you look at the film. <laughs> when I look at the film of the Super Bowl, uh, the only guy getting remote, remotely that much was Jerk McKinney. And he didn't even play a snap. So, I mean, pay a running back if you want. And uh, you'll sell a lot of jerseys. You'll sell a lot of jerseys for sure. Uh, you won't win a lot of games. I mean, that's – can't do it. Speaking of jerseys, speaking of jerseys, I want to I wanna talk about what we got going on this upcoming week. The NFL draft, one of the few things that has not been – well, I say it's been affected, but we still had it going on. We're still going with this draft coming up this week, which is a lot of – Big time talent, big time players. A lot of guys been working a long time to be working to get to this position where they can make their dreams come true and and you know get drafted by an NFL team. So with the draft coming up, we got to talk about the big talent at the top of the board. We got to talk about quarterbacks because because we're probably going to be talking about a couple quarterbacks going in that top ten. Guys, I'm gonna open the pan I'm gonna open the panel, open the discussion. Who are some of your top prospects? Guys, that you got your eyes on big time playmakers that are going to make it out of this draft class. Hey, man. Well, I'll, I'll jump right in, man. I think you got to start with what I feel like is the best player in uh, in this year's draft, and that, that's Chase Young. I think whoever does land Chase Young is getting an instant impact guy. You know, you could, you might not be able to pencil him in for double digit sacks first season. But I think by his second season, he's pretty much a guaranteed pro bowler. Uh, he, he, he's in that same mold of a, of a Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa. He's got that same type of coaching, got that same type of athleticism. And this is a guy that can come in and change your team, man. You're talking about the top of that board. Once you, once you look at Chase Young, right behind him is Joe Burrow. I mean, arguably, arguably coming off the best college football season of all time. Uh, I think uh, the first pick. If the Bengals, everyone just, you know, seems to think that that's such an easy choice. I think that's a little bit harder of a choice than it, than it, than it may look. But at the same time, uh, Joe Burrow's probably got to be that guy for the, for that number one pick. I don't know. And then you got Tua, too. I know a couple of you guys are high on Tua. Like, uh, I don't know. What, what, what do you guys think? Uh, I mean, I, I agree with you, man. I mean, the obvious no-brainer is definitely going to be Chase Young. But uh, I think 
one guy that's not getting enough credit, and I, I have heard people talking about him, but I think they should be he should be getting just as much talk as Chase Young has, and that's Jeff Okuda, man. Uh, when I when I put on some film and watch him as a corner man, he, I think he he could start for almost any team right away. He's probably better than half the guys already playing in the NFL. He could definitely be a number one on a lot of teams, and uh, I think whichever team does draft him is is going to get a steal in in a, in a certain way because a lot of people are talking about Chase Young, but Okuda could easily be the defensive rookie of the year in 2020. Facts, facts. Yeah, I, mean, I don't Okuda, really like Okuda, please. Okuda's a dog. I don't really have too much to add, man. Face a dog. Those guys in my eyes, generational talents, and uh, then it's just the rest. I mean, the board. But those two can miss prospects. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I think I think if I'm talking can't miss prospects, I'd also throw. Uh, it's two more guys I personally would throw in the mix. Uh, one is Isaiah Simmons, man, out of Clemson. Uh, I feel like we we can't talk can't miss prospects without throwing them in the mix because this dude he he's he's really a chess piece because he he can be used in so many different ways. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whichever team drafts him. They decide to you know rock with him in middle linebacker or outside linebacker. Or, I mean, he, I could even see him playing safety with the range he has. He did it very effectively at Clemson. That's one more guy. Another guy, man, I, I'm real high on. Like, I think he might be sort of on the boomer bus side, but I, I think we'll hear his name called in the top 10. And that's Makai Becton out of, out of Louisville. Uh, this guy is about 6'7", uh, 368. So this dude's a mammoth old tackle. And, uh, I mean, he's in that mode of those old school old tackles that, you know, we grew up seeing, like a Jonathan Ogden or a, uh, you know, Orlando Pace. Like, he's got that type of potential. Will he reach it? You never know, but I mean, his size, his power, uh, you know, the tenacity he plays with, the, the mean streak he plays with, man, he's got that type of potential. Those are two more guys I keep my eyes on. These guys I, I, I think could got that type of potential where we could be talking about them year after year on, on this podcast. Definitely, definitely some big time talent in this draft. One of the biggest, deepest positions in terms of talent that we've been hearing about this draft class is the wide receiver position. We talk about the wide receiver position having depth of talent and one of the best wide receiving classes that we've seen in years. Bryce, what do you think the best strategy would be in terms of picking a wide receiver in this draft? Because this guy's heavy at the top but there's a lot of good talent on the board. Yeah, man, that's tough. I think we all know about, about uh, C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, but, I mean, there's so many receivers in this draft that you might be able to, you might be able to wait on one of those guys and get some, get some value at some other positions in the first round, just knowing that there's so much value when it comes to receiver. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. Like, what do you guys think about that, that Lamb versus Judy battle? Who you guys think is that top is that top receiver? Man, me personally, I think Ruggs is kind of getting slept on in this whole conversation. But I do think it is between uh, Lamb and Judy. And if it was me, I would go with Judy. I just think he is a complete package, man. Like, like I, I don't see how how he, like we were just talking can't miss prospects, and and honestly, he could fall into that category. Uh, you never know with wide receivers, though. And like you mentioned, like. You can you can wait and, and get some good depth. As we've seen in the past, a lot of wide receivers come out in the second, third rounds and, and are still great players. Michael Thomas comes to mind. Uh but but yeah, man, I think Judy is gonna is gonna fall into one of those one of those categories of can't miss players or prospects. Yeah, I, I can't agree with you more. Like I think there's a lot of guys out there, but uh, Judy and Lamb are the guys at the top. But like you said, like Michael Thomas, there's guys that fall. There's guys that really get it done production-wise and didn't go high. And uh, a name I want you to remember is um, Jalen, Jalen Rieger, TCU, uh, speedster. Um, he, he reminds me of uh, Percy Harvin, about similar size. Um, and Harvin would kill in this era of football. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. almost positionless. And, right. and Jalen Jalen didn't have the combine that – Everyone thought he'd run a 4-3. They thought he'd run close to rugs. And uh, he, from what they say, he put on 10 pounds or so, you know, get stronger for the combine, ran about 4-4-7. Percy Harvin ran 4-4-1, played a lot faster. I, I think we're going to see the same out of Jalen, and I think that's a steal. I think uh, he's going to take the top off a lot of defenses. I think Jet Sweets, you know, the new NFL, they're just going to find ways to get him the ball in space. And uh, it's going to be a killer. You, you don't want to see that type of guy end up, with uh, New England or something. So uh, that's, that's a name you should watch out for. 
No, nah, that's facts, the man. Talent, for that's sure. Facts. And another thing about a guy like that, bro, is that, like, that dude might have gone in the first round. I mean, he might go first round this year, but in past drafts, he probably would have been a bona fide first rounder. And you could get real value if you get a guy like that in the second, maybe even third round. You never know how to, you know how 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 it crumbles, man. So if you get a guy like that in in third round, man, like you you won. You know, you can see a Terry McLaurin situation. Another guy to keep an eye on is is a uh, is a uh, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, this guy's been rising up boards recently, man. He's a playmaker. I kind of compare him to Odell Beckham the way he can compare, he, the way he can take a regular a regular pass, a regular slant pattern to the house at any given moment. So that's another guy to keep your eyes on, man. But uh, I know Scruff for those Eagles, man. You guys are receiver needy right now. You all receiver stars, man. Which one of these receivers, you know, you got your eye on as a, as a, as an Eagle, man? Honestly, there's 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 one guy who I really like uh, in terms of fitting the profile of what we are lacking, and I think that'd be uh, KJ Hamler from Penn State. Um, I, I'm not sure he'd be a first round talent for me, but I think he's definitely a dude we should look at in like the second round territory. I like. Uh, I like Brandon Ayuk. I've been watching a lot of tape on him. I've been I've been watching a lot of Brandon Mims. I'm trying to get a feel for him and his game. Uh, honestly, um, my most ideal fit would probably be uh, Rugs or Lamb. Um, but um, if we're sitting there, all three of those guys are off the board. I've been I've been watching a lot of Justin Jefferson. I'm convinced that this dude's going to be a pretty good player. Um, and getting the right right getting the right guy is really the the, the biggest pick. So for, for the Eagles right now, that's that's the biggest thing. But I like a lot of those guys, man. So it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to pick, man. It's it's a lot of good talent on the board. I just hope we can get somebody that can actually catch the ball. I feel that. I feel that when you when you talk about catching the ball, you talk about all these receivers, tons of talent on the board, man. And it really brings up a lot of questions. Uh, if you were a GM, like what type of drafting philosophy would you follow? Would you be the type of GM that drafts? To fill holes on your team, would you draft for need? Would you draft for value? Would you take best player available no matter what? You always following your board based on who the best guy is on that board. What, what, what which way would you guys go? Uh, uh Ron, what, what, what you think, bro? If, you, if you're a GM, you're in that high seat, man. You're making those millions of dollars just to pick players from college. <laughs> like, what, uh, <laughs> what philosophy would you follow, bro? Man, for me, it's always been about where where need meets the best prospect a lot of teams always say you know they're gonna go best player available and all that but it's just not true if the Chiefs were somehow picking in the top 10 or had the number one pick they would not pick Joe Barrow because they got Pat Mahomes that's just the fact like so it, it's really just about where your need meets your your the talent or this that's available like a good example would be the Redskins and the Lions in this draft the Redskins don't necessarily need a player like Chase Young, but the talent is so high that it's like, why would you pass on that? It's just going to make a strength stronger. Or the Lions, uh, one thing we're going to talk about in a few minutes is, is if they're going to trade back or whatever. I say, why would they trade back when a player like Jeff Okuda is going to be right there? And that's a need for the Lions when, when they're missing a, a corner after they just uh, let Darius Slay go to the Eagles. So for me, it's always about – specifically what your team needs and specifically what's available. You can't really ever pick one or the one way or the other because it just doesn't really make sense to to do it that way. Like at the same time you wouldn't pass on a top prospect like Chase Young just because. Yeah, I agree with that. I think you gotta I, I, I personally I would say you don't want to draft in a position of need too strongly because then you end up reaching for a guy that might not be the right fit so you gotta you gotta play strong to your board personally i think that's the best way to go and you gotta also look at the depth and the value you know if you know there's gonna be value in another position you feel strongly about somebody and you gotta look you gotta look at it like that but ultimately you gotta when you when you're in a position and you have such a strong need coming in you know I, i'm not opposed to particularly picking two players of the same position at certain times if you really really have a bad need and shoot, flip a coin, you got a good chance that one of them, one of them hit. So, you know, in a, in a certain stretch like that, I, w I wouldn't be opposed to that. You get somebody in the mid and in a later round, and maybe you got a gem. You know, sometimes a fifth rounder will outplay the, 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 the second or first rounder. You know, you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree with everything everyone's saying. But um, I take a little bit different approach. Like, uh, best player available, you know, pending your scheme. Now, there's a few guys that transcend scheme, and – 
of course, they'll be high, best player available. But after that, I think you got to take guys that fit your scheme. I mean, when you take a guy that doesn't fit your scheme and you, and you try to just, just fit them in that mold, it, does, it doesn't work. Um, uh, I'm not – this isn't a draft pick, but we've seen – Zone corners, how they look in man. We, we've seen Josh Norman exposed, uh, Nambi exposed. Um, you, you really got to get the tools, to, you know, for your car, for your engine, you know. Like Redskins had perfect example. Like you said, taking two draft picks, right? The scheme called for Kirk Cousins. They took RG3. They had to change the entire offense. It kind of divided the team, kind of divided the organization, the fan base. Um, if you would have just traded, not even traded up for RG3, just took Kirk, you would have been fine, man. But, right? Yeah, nah, that's that, that. Yeah, that is a fact, though. I mean, you you do run you do run into uh, issues when you try to be too smart. I think that's what happens to some of these teams. You know, they end up outsmarting themselves on draft day, and they end up, you know, <laughs> and, and they they end up just looking looking foolish down the line. Uh, if it was up to me, though, personally. I would really always go uh, best player available every time I could. I mean, I know it doesn't always sound right. And if, don't get me wrong, if I'm, if I'm the Chiefs and I'm looking at, you know, Joe Burrow, you know, I mean, I probably – I mean, I wouldn't do that. But the thing is, if you have Pat Mahomes, you're probably never looking at that pick, you know. And I, and that's why I think, like, BPA usually – it usually works out in, 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 for, the, for the best. I mean, especially in the first round. If I'm in the first round, I'm not trying to – uh, fit need because I can end up missing on a guy that's a generational talent. How like a, if you do a redraft, JJ Watts top five in any draft, you know. But maybe there's a team on the board that didn't want to take him because they they felt that their defense was was shared already, you know. And I just feel like that you can run into you can run into problems if you're not going BPA in that first round. But I could definitely I could definitely understand feeling need, especially in those lower rounds, getting competition for for, for other uh, for other positions, things like that. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. And we talking about trades, man. Rome mentioned it. Uh, we talk about the Lions, number three. I, I say, you know, that's the ultimate value versus need position. I mean, the Lions, I mean, they got needs. They they, could, they need a couple things, honestly. Nothing really stands out about that roster. You know what I'm saying? They they need – they could they could leverage and they could get a whole, you know, Lion share of draft picks. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously though. Go, go, go. Nah, quarterback is gonna be the position to need, man. Draft day, you already know how stuff goes. Rome, 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 Rome said it on Twitter. Yo, quarterbacks, offensive tackles. Let's push these receivers down the board, baby. <laughs> man, that would be. I would be so blown, bro. As a Redskins fan, if I see like. A Henry Ruggs or a C.D. Lamb fall to the fall to the Eagles, man, or the, even the Cowboys, some one of these dynamic playmakers. I don't think it's gonna happen. I think that Ruggs and Lamb will both be gone by y'all's pick, unless y'all trade up. But I can see man. it, man. It's, yeah, I can see it. Think about last year. The Redskins really wanted Dwayne Haskins. That was their guy. Yeah. They didn't think he was gonna be on the board at fifteen. You know, or wherever they picked, they picked middle of the middle of the first round. They sat Pat, and he fell right to him. Y'all was feeling real good about that when he was potentially projected number one pick. So, That's you know, a fact. That's a fact. Man, I, hey, I stranger no thing has happened. I have no idea what the Lions are gonna do with that pick, but I'm confident they'll get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, that <laughs> that's one thing. Confident. That's one thing I think think uh, we all agree on is the Lions will definitely somehow fumble that pick, whatever they do. Uh, I mean, unless they draft Jeff Okuda, that would be the only sensible thing to make sense uh, for the for the Lions to do. Um, but another another GM mentioned that they're open to trading down, and that was the Giants. And you want to talk about a guy fumbling draft picks? We should talk about Dave Gettleman. <laughs> uh, what do y'all think about the Giants trading down? Because to me, that's another no brainer. This to me, this could be one of the most basic drafts. It, it might not be that exciting just to to put that out there now. It, it could just be boom, boom, boom. Because the Giants, if to me, a smart GM drafts an offensive lineman, right? You just got Saquon, you just got Daniel Jones. Now you need to protect those guys, right? I mean, we are talking about Dave Gettleman, so let me know what y'all think. I think they should draft an offensive lineman. I, I, I know, I know, I certainly don't want them drafting Isaiah Simmons. I'll tell you that much. I certainly don't want that. 
I would be like Chase Young and Isaiah Simmons in the same division. I certainly don't want that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Yo, they fumble that pick and don't get an old lineman. I mean, not that they have to. Like they can maximize that pick, but I mean, they if they trade down with the offensive lineman that's gonna be available, that might not be a, a bad move. They can trade down, still probably get a good guy. But yeah, I I, I feel you on that, Rome. I feel like they're in the position where they got to go old line. If they don't sure that up, they don't really start paying attention to that. We could see an Andrew Luck situation in New York. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could kill your quarterback and Saquon. I mean, yeah, facts, facts, uh, facts, guys. So, man, yeah. So, uh, I mean, hey. So, uh, well, one, one more thing to get to in this in this NFL draft talk: some hidden gems. Like, does anybody have any late round sleepers? Hey, you got a lot of sleepers, man. The guy's gonna come out of nowhere. They might not know his name now. Let's inform the audience. So they can, you know, think back like, damn, I heard that dude's name on Sports for the Culture podcast before I even seen him ball out. <laughs> look, look, I got a guy. I don't even know his name. LaVista La Chenault, <laughs> like receiver, baby. Uh, he reminds me of uh, a Debo Samuels. I mean, he gets the ball. He's like Lynch. Uh, he's not that polished of a route runner. Um, I think he's got a lot of growing to do as a receiver. But he's a football player. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you want a football player. You know, he's going to bring it every single week. Just watch his highlights, man. Pull him up on YouTube. My man gets the ball. Uh, and he reminds, he reminds me of Cordell Patterson, except he's not trying to run around you. He's trying to run through you. So, you know, look up that guy. I think whoever gets him has a chance to really get a football player and mold him into something great. He's, he's like a big running back out there, man. Hybrid. Another hybrid player. Okay. Okay. I got I got a name. Um, I think this dude, I think he's got everything it takes to be legitimately a, a, a starter in the league at the very least. Uh, I think he has the caliber to be like an all-pro uh, defensive back. I'm talking about uh, Bryce Hall of uh, Virginia. Uh, I don't think he's going to be a first-rounder, but I think he's got – and when this thing goes back and you're going to look back on this thing, you're going to look back and I'm like, how did this guy not go in the first round? But he's going to end up probably being a, a day-two pick, maybe uh, if he falls anything later than that. Well, these GMs should all be slapped, but um, now nah, he's he's certainly uh, he's he's a guy that I have my eyes on. He's a, he's a talent that I think he's going to look back and he's going to be a, for the very least, high high caliber player. I, I like him a lot. Yeah, yeah, I would. I like I like both of those selections, man. I, I really can't argue with either. I, I think I think uh, I think Bryce Hall is he he he's he's going to be a baller, man. Uh, I mean. And LaVisca Chenault, man, that dude is – yeah, I'm surprised there's not more talk about him going higher in the first round or first round period. Uh, one guy, man, is, is going to be a late round guy. You know, maybe we may be talking about a day two, day three guy, but uh, this dude is a baller. He, he balled out of Kentucky, man. It's uh, Lynn Bowden. Uh, Lynn Bowden played every position on offense for Kentucky, every skill position, man. Quarterback, receiver, and running back. And balled out at every single one. I mean, a quarterback, he even was throwing touchdowns at one point. Like, dude, he's just a straight baller. He returns kicks, so he's going to bring that. He's going to bring that value to a team instantly. I mean, if you want to see a, a crazy highlight tape, just because you're going to see a guy quarterback, running back, and receiver, <laughs> type in Lynn Bowden and watch the Kentucky highlights. It's like, I mean, he was playing NCAA football on these dudes. He's not the fastest, and he's not the shiftiest, but he finds the lanes. And I think that's an underrated skill, man, that – that, uh, that doesn't really come up once you just do measurables, you know? Being able to have that vision to find lanes but it doesn't look like there's any room to run, uh, that's, the type of, that's the type of skill that Lynn Bowden has. He's a guy that can operate in space. And uh, if he goes to a team like the Chiefs, man, watch out, man. They're going to know how to use that dude, man. He's a, he's a Swiss Army knife. All right. I feel like I'm going to get some, some booze on my pick. Uh, my pick is 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 a player who people who people know, but I feel as though they're sleeping on very heavy. A lot of people don't think he's going to translate to the NFL. And uh, my pick for this year's sleeper is Jake Fromm, uh, the quarterback out of Georgia. Now I know a lot of people going to roll their eyes. A lot of people going to be like, "Man, this dude up here talking crazy. It's just a hot take." Yada yada yada. But we've seen stranger things happen in the draft. And my philosophy for the draft on 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 the players is it's not. When you get drafted is where you get drafted. You put a guy like Jake Fromm in the right situation with the right coaches, and he will be a star. And, uh, I mean, you, you look at guys like Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins, late-round quarterbacks. They're all stars now. 
So he, you don't have to get drafted in the first, second round as a quarterback to, to be a somebody. And uh, I think Jay Fromm's going to be a somebody in this league. Yeah. I like from. I, I I like from. He's decent. He's he remind me of AJ McCarron, he's like a career backup kind of guy. <laughs> nah, nah. Look, if, if all it takes is the right shot. You right. never know. AJ could have been somebody had had he had the right situation. Yeah, but they, you know they got drafted by the Bengals and sat behind. Oh, you know Andy Dalton. He's a pretty good guy, I guess. You know, if he was really that good. He could have beat out Andy Dalton for his job. I mean, the guy's getting replaced this year. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. I, I wish him the best, though. Seriously, but another dude, uh, quarterback. I. I, I got a. Uh, another eye on. I say Jordan. Jordan Love is a guy who I think is. Uh, I'd say he was underwhelming in college, but I think he's going to do better on the next level. He goes to the right team. I love Jordan Love in college, but I also love Brock Osweiler in college, though. So. All right, let's keep it moving, man. Uh, hey, I want y'all, you know, audience, hold us to those gems. We're gonna see next season, we're gonna, we're gonna revisit our gems and see if any of them end up being something. So, let's keep it moving, man, to our next segment. This is what we call our state your case segment. It's a two verse two format. We're gonna list topics, and the two of us on the bottom will battle the two people on top on your top screens. So today it'll be me and Tim versus Rome and Scruff. So let's get it. Let's get it. First topic of the day. If you guys didn't hear the rumor, there was an Odell Beckham Jr. versus Stefan Diggs rumor. It ended up fizzling out, but it's still something to talk about. Who do you guys think is the better receiver? Stefan Diggs. Or Odell Beckham Jr. Me and Tim got Odell up top. Y'all got Diggs. Jump ball. Let's get it. Man, Diggs, if we're talking right now, today, based off what we just seen last season, I don't see how anybody can't go with Diggs. Uh, did OBJ play last season? He was in Cleveland, right? With the in the brown jersey. Like uh, he didn't do too much. I don't I don't really remember. He wore that watch. That's what he did. He wore that Richard Milley. He was making like fashion statements. Meanwhile, Stefan Diggs was balling out. With an average quarterback who was getting paid way too much money while people were thinking he was second fiddle to Adam Thielen. Now Diggs got his way out. He's about to get his money. I mean, this is this is kind of an easy question. I don't want to disrespect OBJ. He's a great receiver. But we gotta we gotta look forward here, man, and not in the past, not at these old Odo one-handed highlight videos. Diggs is the better receiver right now. That's crazy. That's crazy. Man, OBJ is that guy. Man. He, he's a, he's a top five receiver. Man, he's he, he's playing with Baker, who sophomore season, and he played with Eli. Man, he left Eli. Eli had to retire. Like Eli had to leave the league. Like, he he went home, man. You know, and, and Kirk isn't that bad of a quarterback. I, I wouldn't call him an average guy. He just got paid again. Um, some people say that's a mistake, but uh, I, I don't think so. Man. Kirk Kirk's been paid at two organizations. Man. So he's doing something right, but uh, Odell's obviously better. Um, if Odell was to be traded, he would garner more on the market than Stefan Diggs. He's selling more jerseys. He's a household name. He, I mean, he's friends with Drake. <clears throat> like, Stefan Diggs, I mean, we know him in this area, right? We, we know him. He's a Maryland guy. But outside of that, like, yeah, what's he done? What's he done? What's his biggest highlight? We know, we know Odell's highlights. Well, luckily for uh, Stephon Diggs, a highlight doesn't make – it doesn't win you games. It's, all, it's a highlight is over so quickly. Uh, think about Odell Beckham, man. If you look at the you look at the question from the service, you would think it, like, it wouldn't even be a conversation. But if you actually pay attention, you look at the stats and you watch the games and you see who shows up week in and week out, regardless of who's throwing him the ball, the answer is Stephon Diggs because Stephon Diggs did it before he had a reliable uh, quarterback with Kirk Cousins. He did it with – Whoever they had as starting quarterback, they had a lot of different ones across the way. And you performed with every single one of them. Odell Beckham, yeah. Uh, Baker Mayfield, yeah. He's not the best quarterback, but shoot, I think he's a little bit better than um, what's his name? Case Keenum was that the quarterback that was that was there before? Come on. 
Stephon Diggs all day. Debatable. Yeah, I mean, I feel you with the Stephon Diggs talking. Like, like, like Tim said, man, we Maryland guys, so we got to rock with him. But we talking about OBJ, fellas. Are y'all serious right now? I mean, like, Stephon Diggs, yeah, he, he, he just entered that top ten talk. You know what I mean? For the last three years, we've been talking about that. Is Odell Beckham the best receiver? Uh, Stephon Diggs hasn't sniffed that best talk yet. I mean, he sniffed that top ten. I don't even know if we can really. He, he, he's outside looking into the top five, in my opinion. And uh, OBJ, man, I mean, we know what he can do. He's certified. You got to get him in the, in the right situation, of course. Uh, Baker Mayfield has a year. Think about. I mean, just think about how much the Browns changed just bringing you know Odell Beckham on. Just that threat. I mean, they had the best season they've they've had in years. Just bringing bringing that guy aboard. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's the best receiver in the league, but we compare him to, to, to Stephon Diggs. I don't think, I don't think it's too close right now. I got, I got, I got to give it, I got to give it to Odell. I think he, he can be in the conversation for best receiver in the league. Where Stephon Diggs, you can't have that conversation, but. Yo, Tom, all right, so I said I didn't want to disrespect Odell, man. Y'all gonna make me do it, man. Y'all really gonna make me do it. So first off, T, you said you said what's what Stephon Diggs is is highlights. The Minnesota Miracle, bro. And like my man Scrub just said, who was throwing them the ball? Case Keenum. And we really going to find out who's who and who's doing what when Case Keenum ends up taking Baker Mayfield's spot out in Cleveland. And then he's going to be catching passes from, from Case Keenum as well. Yeah, OBJ will. So, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how this plays out in the future, especially now that Diggs is going to be a true number one in Buffalo. But my money is on Diggs moving forward, man. I think I think Odell's best days are behind him, man. And and Bryce, you want to talk about best receivers in the league, man. Like Odell is not sniffing guys like Julio Jones and and guys that are consistent. And honestly, he's not sniffing Stephon Diggs because when do, when when does the the games matter most in the playoffs? And who showed up in their playoff games? The few playoff games both these receivers have played, Diggs showed up. I remember Odell's only playoff game, he was dropping passes and punching holes in the wall. So, I mean, people say Odell's one of the best receivers in the league, and I'm like, what has he done? What has he done? He kept he gave us Eli for an extra couple years. I, I didn't want that. So, no no disrespect to Odell, man. I feel like I'm, I'm about to start piling on, but, like, Stephon Diggs is, is the smart money here. All right, yeah, man. We're we going to keep it moving the next time. I think y'all, y'all might have – Got that W on that one. So let's keep it pushing back. Hey, uh, John Rule versus 50 Cent, man. If you guys are, are let's just sleep under a rock, you know about these battles that's been going on. It was a rumor going around that we could have a John Rule versus 50 Cent battle on Instagram Live. I think that would be classic. I think everybody would enjoy it just based off the history alone, the volatile history, I must add. Uh, I mean, hey, me and T, we got John ja Rule, Roman Scruff. Y'all got 50. Jump ball. Let's get it. Who, who got the better catalog? Catalog? Oh, nah. You talking about catalogs, bro? <laughs> talking about... Nah, man. If we talking about catalogs, we're going with 50 Cent. Because, dude, first of all, Get Rich or Die Trying is literally out. one of the best albums ever. Um, Then he got hits and hits and hits on hits after that, too, man. Then keeping it coming. Them just the classics, man. Workout classics. All types of stuff, man. Get you right. 50 Cent, man. You know what time it is, man. I, I don't, you know what time it is, man. I, I know the classics. I know the classics. Hey, man, we know the classics, man. But come on, bro. Let's let's look at the facts. First of all, we can't let this go, go past unsaid. 50 Cent came into the game beefing with everybody. One of them, one of them guys being Ja Rule. Was getting on Ja Rule for singing. A year or two later, 50 Cent come out with Candy Shop. This is a grown man singing about Candy Shop and Lollipop. <laughs> bro, I'm just saying, man, hey, I'm, I ain't mad at it. You know, you got to get it where you can. But you literally came in the game. This is my man for singing. At least my man was singing some some, some stuff that made, made sense. You know, it, it went together. It wasn't uh, take you to the Candy Shop. Like, what, what, what's the Candy Shop? What are we talking about here, man? Like, come on, dude. Like, don't get me wrong, man. I love 50. I love that whole era, but it, it, my history, man, is John Rule over 50 Cent every time. <laughs> okay, first of all, yo, like, we saw this, we saw this play out in real life. We saw this play out in real life. 50's already won. 
Yeah. I was in like middle school. I remember 50, 50 yards. This is over. 50, like Ja was waving the white flag and everything. But if we want to, if we want to rebring this up, then I'm sure like 50 would just kill him again. Um, I mean, we could even do it off of music. We could bring their, their acting game into it. Uh, y'all seen Fast and the Furious, the original? Did you know Ja Rule was in that? Yeah, 50 Cent's been in a lot of acting movies too, man. He's, he's got a big Hollywood career, but Ja ain't sniffing that. He ain't sniffing none of that. He's sniffing him in music, in acting. I mean, it's not even a competition, man. Like, what do we, 50 Cent and Ja Rule, man? Come on. Come on. Look, now. man. Look, man. We, we can't debate who's a bigger mogul, right? We have 50 Cent. He has power. He's all sorts of businesses, and then Ja Rule has a fire festival, right? <laughs> but. <laughs> But when you're talking about catalogs, um, 50, 50 has a, a classic album. Some good mixtapes. That's it, man. Ja Rule songs are timeless. You know what I'm saying? Ja Rule and Ashanti. Where's the refugee unit? That, that should tell you right there, right? You know what I'm saying? You, you don't want to hear many men anymore. But if you, somebody drops Ja Rule and Ashanti, pick a song. Everyone, everyone wants to hear it. Man. People, people will get up and dance. Like, check this out. 50 Cent's the original Carol Baskins, man. Ja Rule. <laughs> like, that's a fact, man. He's, he, he's the original Carol Baskins, bro. Like, think about it. Think about it. You're doing the same thing as the guy that you're hating on, man. <laughs> Ja's out there singing his heart away, making bangers. You come in, tell the world, you know what I'm saying, he, he, he got to stop singing. And you start singing, man. Magic stick, candy shop, man. Awesome. Stop it, man. Stop it. You did the same thing in the songs you were singing on uh, Better Than Jaws song. Like, that's just a fact. It's just a fact. What, 50 doesn't do shows anymore. He doesn't. When's the last time you seen 50 on the mic? When's the last time you seen Ja Rule on the mic, man? He he not even allowed out the house no more, man. He been he been on lockdown. He been <laughs> he, he had to retire from the game, man. He got dislayed so bad by Fifty, man. Dude, 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 who can't even do a show, man, on this side this side of the East Coast, man. Yo, look up look up the video where Jaws look up the video where Jaws performing at that NBA game, and and he asked the crowd to, to sing the words to his song, man. It didn't tell me who wants to hear a Ja Rule and Ashanti song in 2020, man. Come on. Hey, Come man, on. He's, still doing, he's still doing shows. 50's not doing shows, man. He's, he's trolling on IG like that. He got like that power thoughts. money. He don't need to do shows. Ja's still doing shows because that's like the, the, that's like when, when you are old ass musician and you broke, well, man. Well, well, check this out. Ja wanted to go on IG Live, go song for song, 50 Duffin. Yes, because he would have got it is a sleeper, man. Ja Rule would have crept up on. I'm telling you, if you go song for song, man, they close it, and you might think, especially if you're talking about 20 songs, man. Ja Rule got a catalog, and I actually saw a stat that said uh, Ja Rule had, uh, I think it was 17 songs in the top 100, and I think 50 had something like 38 songs in the top 100, right? But the airtime, like the amount of hours that they were on the top 100, was only like 100 hours apart. So it basically showed that, like, although 50 had more, more hits, Jaws' hits lasted a little longer to the public. And that's kind of how I feel when I hear that music. When I hear one of them Jaws songs come on, like one of those Ashanti bangers, or even a jump with J Lo. Like, I'm even, real. A couple, a couple of jokes you had, don't know, man. Like, them jokes are nostalgic. They bring you back. You start bopping a little bit. Bro, if I hear Candy Shop right now, <laughs> if I hear Candy I mean, Shop, I, right I, now, candy shop man. I, I, I think y'all, I think y'all forgetting about uh, uh, Ja Rule songs with DMX, Ja Rule songs with Jay Z. Uh, a little known fact: Can I get a Jay Z in the mill? That's Ja Rule song, man. Whole bought that from him. Like, we got yeah, to put some respect on Ja Rule name, man. That's a good song, man. But we just glossing over those G Unit mixtapes, man. They they had the streets on lock, bro. Like. Mixtapes weren't even popping the way that they are now until 50 Cent and G-Unit changed the game like that, bro. Like, like 50 Cent changed hip-hop, bro. Ja Rule didn't really start no movements. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, y'all were acting like 50 ain't got no timeless hits. Like, it, you don't know, when it's your birthday, you don't, you don't play in the club on your birthday? That don't still get a little rotation? No, I, 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 play, I play two chains. I play two chains. I play two chains. <laughs> Yo, me too, though. Me too. I can't lie. <laughs> I can't even lie on that. 
The two chains jump did did still the best. When the last time you when the last time you heard Wankster? That's not one of his best. When last you, I mean, it was a hit when it came out. It it, it charted. When was the last time you heard it? Like he made a lot of disposable music. Well, let the record show that that Fifty Cent won this battle in real time. Ja Rule had his opportunity <laughs> to play, play, get these out, it's it's and he, here we are, twenty years later. So. Fifty, you know, 50 mastered all the war, or they lost the power. You know what I mean? He, he, he's the better strategizer. But uh, when it comes to it comes to hits, at the end of the day, man, time is hits. I'm gonna go with Ja. I'm gonna go with Ja, bro. I think it's a sleeper pick. I think a lot of people wouldn't be able to see it, but they did play hit for hit twenty songs. I think it would get a lot clearer. And I think that's maybe why Fifty Cent. It was. It might have been. It might have been a lose lose situation for Fifty. That's a fact. All right, so, uh, you know, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving, man. Next topic in these 2v2s. We got Luka Doncic versus Zion Williamson, two of the best talents in the NBA right now. I mean, both these dudes are outstanding, amazing players. You would want to start a team with either one of them, but which would you rather choose, Zion or Luka? Uh, me and T on the bottom, we got Luka. Top squares, y'all got Zion. Let's get it. All right. Do we really even really need to have this conversation right now? We talking about Zion Williamson, man. This dude is the freaking biggest thing that's entered the league since LeBron James. We talking about a dude that busted through his Nike shoes. It was the biggest spectacle of the sport. With, with five minutes into the game, the guy busted into his Nike shoes, man. And then and then the dude was pretty much the only man, the the only bad part about the NBA season, man. I wish we could just have the part back where Zion was healthy. Oh my goodness, we and now we're missing it, and now he, this guy's healthy sitting at home. That's the the biggest privacy of the year, man. Zion, man, and he was about to have them boys in the playoffs. Zion is a can't miss once in a generational talent. Dude brings the thunder. Dude is like a total freak of nature in terms of the the size of, his, of like in terms of his strength size and jumping profile for him to be as big as he is and do what he does oh my goodness i haven't seen anything really disliking in a long time give me zion any day over really pretty much anybody man give me luca man take zion man i don't want the fat boy like i'm not starting my my franchise with a guy that didn't even, like he started off his season injured like come on man like, I, I want the guy that is skilled. I want the guy that can score at three levels. I mean, check this out. Porzingis came to his team. We thought maybe Luca might have to take a little bit of a back seat. No, not not at all. They was calling Porzingis a unicorn. Haven't heard that since he's been to Dallas. Luca's the real unicorn. Man. I mean, look look at his numbers, man. He he has LeBron potential. Just just numbers. He doesn't have the athleticism, but um. Zion's a one-trick pony. It's a hell of a trick, but it's, it's, it's one trick. He, I mean, strong and he's fast. He can jump real high. I mean, and he's on a team with talent. The, his team isn't talented. I mean, I mean, isn't not talented. I mean, Drew Holiday, he's a good, he's a good guard. Lonzo's an emerging star. Brandon Ingram's an emerging star. And, and adding Zion helped him, so that that's why they were in the playoff contention. But I'm not starting my team with a guy that's busting out his shoes and can't even stay on the floor, man. Look, man, put the guy on a meal plan. Get the guy on a diet. We'll talk, man. Give me the, give me the European guy that's man. eating healthy, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, you really just trashing my man. Like, he's not the prototype, bro. Like, he's not, like, like just the athletic specimen, bro. Like, people his size can't move that quick and fast and do what he does, bro. Like, this is, this is almost a no-brainer, man. Like, I don't want to disrespect Luca, man. He's a he's a great player, man. But but Zion is is a can't miss prospect, bro. Like how how could you go wrong with this? And I feel like we're getting robbed right now of uh of seeing my man ball out, man. Like like it, it, you hate to see it, man, because because before the season got abruptly ended, he was he was the talk of the town, man. Like he was what everybody was talking about. So I feel like we're missing out right now, man. And I feel like this question would have would have answered itself just like the uh, fifty cent question. Can't miss prospect, moves well for his size. I'm not starting my team with a left tackle. <laughs> I'm 
Like, you know, not, nah. Your logic is crazy. Now, nah, first of all, we're talking about we're talking about coming for somebody. Let's actually. talk about between two prospects, which one of them has got a bigger hole in their game, and that's Luca. Luca, Luca can't guard anybody, man. Luca cannot guard anybody, man. Let 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 let, let, let that be really known, because when these games start getting closer, and he's actually in these tight games with these teams, he's getting cooked on a regular basis. You'd be glad you had Zion, because Zion could guard any, pretty much. He guards your fives. He guards your fours. He can guard your threes. He guards your twos. He might be able to guard a point guard in the right situation. You really don't want to have no mess with that dude, man. I'm telling you, Zion is the guy all day, bro. Talk to him, Bryce. Oh man, I don't know. Luka Luka Doncic is a walking triple double. You talk about a guy that not only facts himself a bucket, it's all his teammates involved. I think the thing I was most impressed with Luka was he was a way better. Def- Defender in a way better matchup than I ever expected him to be in the league. I mean, he can match, match up with literally one through the three. Uh, Luca's got that eye for the game that is rare, rare, rare. It only comes along maybe every every few years. I mean, he's got that Jason Kidd eye for the game. It's just a fact. Uh, Luca is a beast. I mean, you talking about a guy in his second year in the league getting a trip. I mean, a, a triple double, a triple, triple double, bro. Second year in the league. Yo, this dude is ridiculous, man. I mean, like, this guy was bred to do this. See, that's the difference between a guy like Luca and a guy like Zion. Zion wanted to do this and work his whole life to do this. Man, Luca was bred to do this. He's been balling since he was 13, pro when he was like 15, 16 years old, bro. This is what he was made for. And it, it, it's just, it, it, it's what he's all he knows, man. And you can see it on the floor. Luca is a machine, bro. Luca's a machine. And if I got to start my team right now, give me Luka Doncic, and we're going we gonna to win a chip in three years with me at the gym. You talking about born to do something? You, 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 when you're 6'7", and you're 285, and you jump over the moon, you're born to do something, my friend. You're born to dominate the world. The last player that I've seen with that kind of a physical, physical advantage over somebody, that was Shaquille O'Neal. That was the most dominant player of, the, of a decade. Before that... Probably you got to go back to like Will Chamberlain or something like that, man. This dude is at a whole nother physical advantage in the game. And I don't know if anybody could keep up. I mean, well, we've seen Shaq start his career in shape. You know what I'm saying? Like, Luke, I, I just don't trust. I don't trust the guy that enters the league. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is not entering college, coming out of high school, just, just leaving your parents. This guy's entering the NBA overweight, out of shape. You know what I mean? Like, even comes back from injury, and it's, it's still a worry. It's still a concern. You know, the minutes restriction is more due to just, just too much weight on his knees than, the, you know, protecting the knee itself just from standard rehab. I mean, just all jokes aside, I'm going with Luca. Uh, skill for skill, like, when guys progress in their career later on, right, when you can't do it athletically, like – he won't have that much of a transition. He can score from every level. Step back. What do you want? Let me get to the bucket. I can do that. You want me to dish? You want me to rebound? You want me to defend? I mean, the guy's a skilled player. If, if, if you're six feet even and, and you play like Luka, you'd be a dog. If, if you're six feet even and you play like Zion, you'd be uh, probably playing the saxophone in the band. All right? Basketball wouldn't be your sport. You know what I mean? You might. You might. Yeah. You, yeah. Like a Deontay Wilder basketball. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, he's he's an athlete, but that, that that's all. You know, he's he's not skilled. If if you took Zion's skill set and, and put it on the average the average male, I I don't know, man. He, he might be trying to fit into a three four somewhere. Like you're crazy, man. Not only is this dude a freaking freak, but he's also skilled. That's the crazy thing about his game. He's a tremendously great passer, nimble on his feet like a ballerina, bro. Like, are you kidding me? And he do it, yo, the first game when the first game he played, and he's not even a three point shooter. He splashed like four threes. Yo, they were down in the fourth against the Spurs, man. Greg Popovich, man. Big big bro who stepped out there, he hit the four threes on him. He had might he might have had more than that, bro. He had a crazy night. But man, I don't know, man. Give me Zion all day, man. Give me for the give me the transcendent talent instead of, you know. The dude that we we've seen we've seen players like Luca before. Man. We've never guy. seen nothing like Zion, huh? Luca's just a guy. Who 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 we seen like Luca? 
I mean, like honestly, Joe Johnson, the same player. Magic Johnson. <laughs> He's the same player as Joe Johnson. He's like same Johnson. He he, he is is he that much better than Hedo Turkaloo really was? Hedo Turkaloo was a baller. Stop it. <laughs> he was a baller. He got a little more at this pace, Luke is gonna be one of the greatest basketball players of all time, bro. If he stays on this pace and keeps getting better and better year after year. He's going to be one of the best basketball players of all time, bro. If he just maintains. Zion has gonna... the physical. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Zion has the physical ability to one day get to that level. But Luca's skill set is so advanced and so, like, nuanced. There's so many levels to his skill set, bro. It's like this dude could be an all-time great when it's all said and done. It's going to be super interesting to see which one really reaches their potential who ends up having a better career, though. But two guys that are no – Question elite right now on the NBA are Giannis and LeBron James. LeBron James, say who you guys who do you guys think is the MVP of this season? Giannis, LeBron, let's get it, man. We got we got LeBron on the bottom. You guys got Giannis up top. Let's do it. Man, I think it's time to, to just accept the fact that LeBron is old, bro. Like, it's it's happening, man. It, Father Time is undefeated. Like, this is – and I don't, I'm, like, I got Giannis, and Giannis played incredible, and I think he definitely deserves MVP. But I think this is just more so about the world accepting the fact that it's LeBron's time is over. Like, we were just highlighting Zion and how he's balling out. Y'all were highlighting Luka. This whole, this whole thing with LeBron being the greatest basketball player in the world – that's over. That's over. And I don't even know how true that was in the in the first place. So that's how I feel about this topic, man. It's, it's really more so about about LeBron and his time as, as king. His reign is, is coming to an end. And this Check is coming out. from a Lakers fan. Check it out, man. I'm a Bucks fan. And Giannis beat LeBron in every advanced metric period. His team had more wins. I mean, he's scoring more per, per possession, right? But basketball isn't analytics. We're not. This, this is basketball. You got to get on the court and get a bucket and get a win. Uh, LeBron, back to back, uh, beat Milwaukee and beat Kawhi. Um, that's all I'm going to say. I don't, I'm not even going to talk about the topic anymore. <laughs> well, we're talking about the yeah, NBA, man. man. We're talking about the NBA, man. The NBA, it comes down to the best team, the best player on the best team. And right now, that's Giannis. Season ends today. It's Giannis. The dude run through the league, dominated pretty much, punked everybody, just coming down the league, dunking on everybody. That's what he does for a living. LeBron had a great season, but it's hard to deny Giannis's greatness, not even just on the offensive end, but on the defensive end. And that's what gives me the 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 the, the, the edge because he's also a, a, a viable candidate, you can say, for defensive player of the year also. I feel you, man. But at the end of the day, when we talk about most valuable player, I'm, I think we should be done with the best player on the best team. Most valuable needs to mean how much do you mean to your ball club? You know, how good would your ball club be without you on it? Uh, one thing, one thing I know for sure about a uh, Anthony Davis led ball club is that they don't make the playoffs, or they might, they might. Great man, they get the ACs. They got Demarcus Cousins, but Anthony Davis led ball club. He doesn't make the playoffs, man. But LeBron James, once you once you add that and give him Anthony Davis, all of a sudden it looks like, oh wow, how could Anthony Davis have ever been losing? Watching Anthony Davis with LeBron makes you wonder how could Anthony Davis have ever been losing? That's how great LeBron is. You know what I mean? Like, and don't get me wrong, Giannis is that dude. He means a ton to the uh, to the Bucks. But my argument is, if you take Giannis off the Bucks and you take Bron off the Lakers, who do you think is a better team? Give me Bucks ten times out of ten. So uh, at the end of the day, man, most valuable needs to really mean who is the most important guy in the league to their team, not just who's the best player on the best team. Because to me, that doesn't—that's not what most valuable player represents. Hey, man, LeBron did more in the East with less talent than. Giannis. He conquered the East, headed West. Uh, Giannis is behind him in that regard. Yeah, whether you're talking about LeBron or whether you're talking about Giannis, one thing's for sure. We all we, we, we all be 
pretty much getting ready to watch the NBA playoff. If it wasn't for this global pandemic that we're going through right now, so I got I got to transition and talk to you guys about the coronavirus. The people that are at home, just like us, we're all at home. We're all staying at home. We've all been affected by the coronavirus, just like the rest of the world has. We've all been trying to figure our way through it. As loving, dying sports fans, we have been trying to figure this thing out. We have no sports to watch. Thankfully, the NFL draft's still coming up. But things are definitely uncertain right now. We're not exactly sure what's gonna, when we're going to be back to normal or what the new normal is going to look like, uh, especially in sports. No sporting events for at least they're talking about until next year. Like a, a, a like a, 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 you know, the way we're used to sporting events being. So with that, you know, I, I want to talk about this, guys. You know, what do y'all think in terms of where we're at now? We're sitting here in April, and we're we're quarantined to the end of the month, if not longer. Um, what do y'all think, man? Should seasons be canceled? Should they should they do like a season without fans? Uh, T, what you think, man? What's man, the plan look, for the leagues? We're unprecedented times. Uh, who knows what the right answer is at this point? Um, but one thing I do know is uh, things can't go back to normal or, or what we consider, you know, once considered normal until we, we've got a hold in this pandemic. And um, But I think we'll go the way of the country. I mean, you know, for better or for worse, uh, we're going to have to follow the president. Um, a little crazy to say these days, but if he opens the country back up, um, I think that's kind of the way you got to go. Uh, I don't know if that means we have to check temperatures before we enter a game or, you know, if you sneeze, the usher will escort you out. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I don't think we'll I don't think we'll ever see uh, sporting uh, the same. You know what I mean? I think 2020 as a year, this pandemic, you know, as an issue, uh, it's going to be one of those moments we look back in the past and say this is where. Uh, the world shifted, uh, almost like 9-11, uh, Pearl Harbor even. Uh, things changed drastically, and I think that's where we are. We are, and that's where we'll be headed. It's the great unknown for now, but one thing we do know is we need sports, and we have to figure out a way. And uh, I'm just going to trust that these billionaires can, can make it work in a way that's safe, and, you know, you don't lose any loved ones. <clears throat> yeah, I, I watched the presidential press conference the other day, and uh, they actually were asked the question on on how sporting events might look once they they reached what they were calling phase three, which is where people will be able to go back out and, and do stuff type type of stuff, uh, like go to a sporting event. And and uh, the head doctor or whatever was saying that basically a sporting event in a stadium would look something like fans coming in and sitting about two seats apart, you know, having the mask and the gloves on, doing something like that. So then the next question would obviously be. How interested would sports fans be in in attending something like that? Do you do you feel like that's safe? Like if you feel like that's required to be at the game, to sit two seats apart, wearing a mask and a glove, then is that something that you want to spend money on still? How much are those tickets going to go for? Things like that. So uh, who knows, man? Like you said, it's 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 a the new normal. Who, who knows what how it's really going to play out? But uh, I, I I think we need sports, whether we have fans in the stadiums or not. I know right now all this, all the sports we've been talking on this show. I would absolutely love to see some of these debates uh, uh, get settled on the, on the court, man, or, and and see who really who really is the MVP, who's really the better player, uh, whether there's fans in the stadiums or not. So for me, man, I I just need some live sports to watch. I feel that. I feel for that, bro. I, and low key, man, I feel like I'm in the I'm in the same boat. They got they got to figure it out, man. Get us something to get us through this. Tough times watching reruns of classic games. I mean, I think I'm done with the classic games, man. I can only I can only watch the <laughs> Jordan rerun, man. I'm more LeBron rookie year rerun, man. I can't do it no more, man. I can't keep watching stuff because I know the outcome. Let's get a sports right now. But I think it really, since we all want sports so bad, I feel like it begs the question, man. Like, how bad do you want sports? Like, for example, like if if, if tomorrow, let's say the Super Bowl was happening tomorrow, and you had you have free tickets. You know everything you know about the coronavirus. The Super Bowl is happening tomorrow. Would you go to the Super Bowl? Absolutely not. <laughs> we got one no. Absolutely not. Bro, are the tickets much, for free? How much is a ticket? 
tickets are free, bro. The tickets are free, bro. Super Bowl, bro. Are you going or not? Mm. Probably not. Probably not. As, as much as I want to go, I'm, I don't want to be. I, I don't want to be irresponsible here, man. Like uh, I got, I got the kids and all that. Like I don't want to go to the Super Bowl, watch, watch my team win, and then go back, hug a loved one, and then you know they're they're stricken with COVID nineteen. So it's not. It's, you know, I rather win off the field. I'll be completely I'm honest. Be super, I'm gonna be in the super. I'm gonna be in the Super Bowl like this, man. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you would have asked if you would have asked twenty year old drum, I would have been there. No question, no question. But yeah, man, at, at this stage in life, man, I, you got to be smart. Hey, look, man, I'm at the bowl, baby. They give me ticket. They tell me Super Bowl tomorrow. I'll see I you mean, later, I- man. Can- <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, like in, in crazy times, like it's, it's a great opportunity for people to make money, right? I think this is a perfect opportunity for the NFL to start uh, kind of helping and, and and making a little money for themselves. Like, why why don't we have pandemic masks that have our favorite team on them? I need to go to the grocery store and let you know my 49ers are better than the Redskins while I'm picking up celery and, and, and greens and kale and all that. Like, <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's a perfect opportunity, man. Nah, yeah, no facts. In all actuality, though, man, I think they're doing the right thing by, by, by holding the people out of the sport, holding, holding the athletes out, man, shutting everything down. We got we got to get a hold on this virus, man, before we start opening stuff back up. But it is trash. And, like, it's hard. To, it's really kind of hard to imagine a world without the fans in the, in, in the stadium. Like, what would that look like? How would they How would they get the players tested? How would they know that one of the refs don't got COVID? Does everybody just get a, 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 a thermometer as soon as they walk in? Everyone just gets the temperature taken, like, instantly? Like, I mean, how is this going to work? It's like a whole new world, man. We enter an uncharted territory. It's kind of crazy to think about. Like, how do y'all, how can y'all see a world like that working? I suppose you'd have to have all the players. All the players have to be tested. Uh, they'd probably have to all stay in one facility. I've heard things of like them staying like a cruise ship. I've heard like things like them staying like Atlantic City in certain areas, like and just have them like basically quarantined to a certain hotel, tested before and after the games, um, everything like that. Everybody that around would have to be tested. Um, you know, uh, UFC and like you know those type of uh, events. They've been exploring with those type of possibilities. So that's that's what they've been discussing. In terms of a potential solution, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not sure if we should even throw out a solution, man. Like, how do you how do you pitch a solution to um, somebody like Carl Anthony Towns? And you know, prayers and and our thoughts, you know, we're with him. His mom has passed; she lost her fight with COVID. Um, but really, how, how do you tell him that? Uh, you have to suit up. You know what I mean? Like, this, if you want to get paid, you have to suit up. You know, how do you tell his teammates? And and, and the next person, because uh, potentially, like, we're, this COVID came out of nowhere, and how do we know the measures that they're willing to throw out there are really going to keep us safe? Um, well, I think it's another, so... Another question, too, is if, let's say they do reopen everything or, like, get sports going and they got these guys playing, fans or no fans, what happens when someone tests positive? You know, what happens when are you are, are we ready to hear that you know your your favorite tight end is out for two weeks because he's got he's quarantined now? Or what happens if he just got tackled by so and so? Does that man have it also? Like I've seen you tackle him like seven times now. Like who knows, man? It it, it, it might be best to not do it at all. That's that's the question that I I didn't really want to pose. It's not something that I want to see happen as much as I love sports and I know all of us here love sports, but it might, it might be for the best. Who really knows? I mean, in, in every darkness, there's a little light, right? There's a silver lining here, right? This is a perfect opportunity for you to jump into esports. I think esports are going to boom soon. I think you, you need to start trying to invest your money into a, a EA sports, a, a Call of Duty situation. I mean, a League of Legends. Uh, right now, those are the only athletes, if you want to call them that, <laughs> that are, you know, what I mean, getting 
getting paid and competing. Um, but this, this this is a perfect time, and it's also a perfect time to you know tell tell your kid you know it doesn't you don't have to throw a football, you don't have to shoot a basketball. You know, you go to school, you learn, and uh, if you get on that game and you put in the work, I mean, with anything, that's just another avenue. Uh, you put in that work, you build that skill, success will follow. Um, but this is a great time for esports, and that's where the country's heading. But COVID just gave it a head start. Yeah, man, I just got drafted by the 76ers and my uh, my player, so. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'd watch your my player. If you told me you was drafted, I, I'd tune in. I'd hey, tune man. In. That's that that that's about the most that that that's how that's how bad it is. I watch some. I, I would literally watch somebody <laughs> sit. I was sitting sitting watching somebody playing 2K the other day. Hey, I put you on. I put you on my fan dude. Usually, I wouldn't sit there and watch somebody play 2K. I was I was pretty captivated, man. We're gonna start taking bets on on 2K games, man. Like hey, man. get the gambling going on it. <laughs> They got they got athletes going head to head. I seen I seen Gilly the Kid going head to head with Deshaun Jackson on uh, on Instagram Live. Deshaun was giving them that work. I don't know if they had any money on the game. <laughs> Gilly was probably talking crazy talk, but you know, <laughs> hey man, it's, it's coronavirus, man. We doing what we supposed to be doing. We we trying to be responsible, you know. Uh, we, we can only hope for the best in these situations and. Yeah, I hear you, Bryce. I'm tired. I'm, t- I'm tired of the rewinds too, man. I don't want to. I don't, don't want to watch no more classic games, man. So, for now, at least we got the uh, the off season still moving along. The NFL off season. So, you know, stay tuned. We gonna have some. We gonna have some things for you. Yeah, man. We definitely got some good things coming up, man. 420 right around the corner. We are gonna be dropping a live mock draft. Uh, the week of the NFL draft. Be on the lookout for that. We're going to have a ton of stuff on the website, some mock drafts, some some top prospects, all that kind of good stuff. If you haven't downloaded the app, definitely be sure to do so. Hey, good ass sports, man. Follow us, Twitter, IG. Don't stop, stop losing your fantasy, uh, your, your fantasy leagues, man. Stop. You can be spending that money on your wife, your girlfriend, anniversary. <laughs> Tune in, tap in with us, man. Get familiar. Like, we next, man. We look like you. Do it. Yeah. Sports for the culture, man. Yes, sir. Y'all know, y'all know y'all tired of listening to these other these other sports networks, man. Like, join the movement. Hey, for sure. Get the app. Stop, stop. Just stop downloading all them pictures, man. Screenshotting OnlyFans, man. Clip some space. Download the app. Get in tune with us, man. Let me, let me lead us out, fellas, man. Let me, let me hear you say... Sports for the culture. Sports for the culture.